really appreciate it. Um, and we're going to get going on uh, this morning, our final day of the assembly. Um, so I think we're going to have a fantastic day today. Um, and I'm going to hand over to Sarah. That's great. Well, I really enjoyed that, everybody. Thank you so much for giving some thought to that and bringing in photographs and all your items. I thought that was great. Thank you. Um, so we're on our final day. This is it. Um, so the first thing to say is welcome. Thank you again for coming back. Um, sorry, Trish, I'm just going to put you on mute because there's quite a bit of feedback. Um, so, yes, thank you for coming back. And by the end of today, where we're hoping to get to is to have your final set of recommendations for priority areas for action um, relating to your theme. So that's our kind of end point that we're hoping to get to. And um, the way that we're going to get there is that you're going to do and some more sharing now in your larger themed group. And then you're going to go back into your smaller groups to refine your recommendations based on what you've heard in those larger groups. And then we're going to do a big sharing of all of them to everybody. So you will all get to hear all of the recommendations in this session. And then there'll be a voting and the voting is going to take place after this because we don't have time to do it justice in this in the session and we want you to be able to really think about those recommendations and give your opinion you know in your own time really without feeling pressured to do that within the session so that that will be done via survey monkey and we'll give you a bit more detail about that later on how it will happen and what time scales we're doing it in um, but the other thing to say about the recommendations is that um, we we want you to give you the opportunity to present your recommendations to the full cabinet um, so again we felt like it would be too rushed to do that in the session this weekend so there is going to be a separate session which would give you the opportunity to do that and that's looking as though it's going to be monday the 7th of february it will be an evening session via zoom um, so we'd like you know one or two people from each group to kind of put themselves forward if possible uh, to do that presentation of your recommendations back to the full cabinet but your facilitators know about that so if any is interested just flag it to the facilitator but we'll also give you an opportunity to flag that to us as well if you'd like to do it it won't be a big massive formal presentation it'll just be a running through of what the the decisions the assembly came through to and max myself and claire will be able to support you um, in doing that um, so that's the recommendations um, we haven't got any new members of the team today we're all the same so janana marty is here um, offering well-being support again just to remind you if anybody would like that then either direct mass message uh, Janana Marty when we're in this full session or direct message your um, your facilitator when you're in the breakout groups um, and then we of course have Francis offering IT support who is doing that as we speak <laughs> um, and then in terms of breaks we are going to give you obviously your full hour for lunch, which is probably going to be a bit earlier today. Um, so the lunch is probably going to be around midday, quarter past 12, and then you'll have your full hour. And of course, we have breaks um, this morning and this afternoon as well. And then one final thing we wanted to end the day on, which we thought would be a really positive note, because we all we all love Herefordshire. Um, we love living here. So we wanted to hear about your vision for Herefordshire in 2030. What do you want the county to look like? And it's not that far forward, obviously, it's eight years. Um, but what, what changes would you like to see happen in those eight years to get us to that point of what do you want the county to look like? So we've just got some time after you finish your recommendations in considering that. And then we've, we felt it'd be really nice if you could, in your groups, just come up with a broad kind of vision for the county and then we'll come back and everybody will hear those and at that point we will again be joined by councillor chines and the leader of the council councillor um, david hitchener who's going to be um, hearing those vision statements but just to reiterate um, the recommendations you the, the full cabinet want to hear those so that will be a separate session 
So I think that's all my running through. I don't think I've missed anything. Um, just to say, um, you know, just again, you've got your facilitators to help guide you through the process. We've seen some of your draft recommendations that are coming out. They're looking fantastic. So you did some absolutely brilliant work yesterday. Um, so keep that up if you can. Uh, we appreciate the, the time and the energy that you're giving to this. And that's really coming through in the recommendations that are coming out. So you're doing an, a brilliant job. Um, we thought we'd probably just share the uh, conversation guidelines with you again, just to remind you of these. Uh, Max, can you flash those up on our screen, please? Thank you. So I won't run them uh, through with everybody, but in a way, this is even more important to remember these today, because when you get to the point of forming your final recommendations, you know, it may be that, again, difficult decisions need to be made. So we just really encourage you um, to stick to these conversation guidelines. Um, there we go, that's the second page there. And then just before we, we break into our um, six groups, three groups, sorry, um, we thought we'd like to take a group selfie um, because this would just be really nice to put into the report. So quickly just do your hair, put any lipstick on if you want to, do whatever you want to do. And then Max is just gonna take a couple of screenshots of us all. Can I just and say, I think, if anybody doesn't want to be part of that, then yeah, you just turn your camera off. Cameras off. That's fine. There's no, there's no pressure to be at all. Oh, we've got the cat. We've got Caitlin's cat in. So smile. <laughs> Tell us when you've done it, Max. Are we going to wave? <laughs> Thank you, everybody. I think okay. I've got that. Brilliant. Did you get the next screen as well, Max? I did. I just spammed a few, so I'll pick some good ones. That's brilliant. Thank you. OK, so we're now into your three big groups. Facilitators will talk through with you when you get there about what to expect. But basically, it's sharing your draft recommendations that you, you did yesterday. OK, so we'll see you in about an hour. Well, it's just under an hour, actually, but we have more time if you need it. OK, folks, welcome back. Hey, you managed to grab yourself a drink during that time, have a little breather. So what we're going to be doing next is we're moving you back into your small groups of six. So you're going to be able to just reflect and refine uh, your recommendations based on the discussions that you've just had as a full group. Um, and just to let you know, when we do our sharing, which will be done after lunch, we are, are only sharing with this group. So nobody external is coming in to hear our recommendations at that time. It's just an opportunity for you as a full assembly, all the assembly members to hear that full set of recommendations together. Um, and then you will have a bit of time back in your small, small groups after that, just to reflect on, on those um, and to make sure that you're really clear about those recommendations to help you when you go into that voting um, after the assembly. OK, so we're going to split you back into your facilitated small groups now and, and you've got an hour for this session and um, which will take us up to the lunch break. So we'll be breaking for lunch at 12.15. OK, have fun. We'll see you back here in an hour. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Hope you had a good lunch. Nice to see you all. OK. So what, what we're going to do, we were going to put you straight into plenary now and go into our sharing, but we know that a couple of the groups would just like another 15 minutes just to kind of feel like they're really well prepped to go into that sharing session. So your facilitators are going to just work with you for another 15 minutes, help you kind of uh, go through those recommendations, make sure whoever's sharing is happy with what they're saying, um, and then we will bring you back um, and we will come together and hear all of your final recommendations. So we're going to split you into groups. This bit might be a bit messy. Apologies. It just takes Max a little while to, uh, to reallocate you. Um, and the land use, just to let you know, you're all going into one big group because we understand that that was your preference for this next bit. OK, but the rest of the groups, you're just going back into your smaller groups. Mm. OK, so just bear with us while we allocate you. You'll all disappear at different moments. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. 
Okay, so we're going to now uh, move into the sharing. So this is obviously the first time that as a full group, you'll be hearing all the recommendations that have come forward from all the work you've done over the course of uh, the last two weekends. So we're going to start with the uh, transport group and we're going to start first off with Lauren's group. Lauren, who's sharing that from your group? Um, John got volunteered. John, I can't see you because I've just started. started sharing the screen are you happy to do that for us you're probably on mute at the moment um it yeah hostage to fortune but i but i but i could good a good centurion i step forward thank, thank you, you john. Thank you, john. Thank you. Encouragement. are you able to um see the screen okay do you need me to make it larger at all for you to read them out I can read it, but there's the messages popping up, so a bit larger would be probably helpful to me. Okay, I can do that for you. Being a fossil. <laughs> Any better? That's fine. Can I slide it down myself? Because it's not. I, I will. I will do it for you. With you, don't worry. I'll stay with you. So go oh, ahead. Okay. What's What's read out number one for us? Right. Okay. For well, our transport group, our top two are the following. First, which you think is essential is Herefordshire has a seamless integrated transport service enabling all alternatives to car uh, in, in use by 2025. And this is sub-bulleted by some other pointers. This includes integrated public transport timetables that are widely available and match reality. That's the most important one in that. And affordable to all one ticket system, a well publicized information portal and clear branding tracked and publish targets and milestones to meet outcomes. Uh, you, our John. second one, which, which is really needs to be integrated with number one, is prioritise connecting rural villages and town centres to key locations with innovative and safe, in inverted commas, last mile travel options also by 2025. These connections make it easier for people to travel by their preferred non-fossil fuel dependent method. And we put non-fossil fuel because we not all sold totally on electric and it, it, that may change as a technology or better things come along. Uh, reinforcing the use of a hub and spoke model and is linked with an integrated transport service. If you got both of those together and then that to be implemented together, you'd have something that was worthwhile in our view. That's it. Thanks, John. We've got three more. I've just scrolled down for you. Can you see that okay where it starts number three? Yes, I, oh, I thought we were just doing the top two. Sorry, we're doing the lot, are we? Yes, please. Okay, right. They con me. Um, <laughs> there, is a, there is a planning mandate to insist all new industrial and residential developments avoid car dependency with immediate effect. They could do that now with the planning rules and any authorizations of any plan. Uh, number four, by 2024, all public transport, taxi services, and publicly owned transport is non-fossil fuel dependent. Decision makers and providers lead by example and successfully implement this transition by an enforceable end date. Can you lift up a bit to do and do five? Thank you. Um, five, a suite of interventions are introduced to help residents access electric travel options in affordable ways, learning from other places worldwide adopting and adapting as technologies change. Sub-bulleted, this, this will include reducing non-electric vehicle parking in city slash town centers, electric vehicle carpools, incentives for business to add EV charging points, in, increased number of public charging points, promotion of training and employment in the sector locally and grants. Uh, for, can you lift it up at this? down the bottom of my seat, thank you. For residents to add charging points at home. This is reviewed after two years on an ongoing basis. If you lift up number six before I start, it would help slightly. Thank you. Uh, number six, best practice interventions that reduce road congestion in the city, towns, and large villages are introduced. For example, this includes low emission zones, preferential areas for non-car passengers with full accessibility. And what we mean by that, we mustn't, uh, inhibit those that are disabled or old that need to, to be carted in by some vehicle or other options. 20 mile per hour zones, hubs on outskirts with a fee or affordable shuttle bus travel options into centers. And well that's done, the John. 
Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much, John. I'm sure you did your group proud there. I think that's a fantastic set of recommendations. That's the first half of our travel recommendations. What I should just say to you is that you will, after we've heard all the recommendations from all themes, be going into your small groups again, just to kind of give you a little bit of time for digestion and reflection on, on what you've heard. Um, so can we please have... Um, Mary, uh, sorry, Vicky, we're going to have the, the, the other half of the transport group's recommendations now. Vicky, who's doing it from your group? Um, Anya is going to do it for me. I, we're going to do it exactly like Lauren's, actually. I'm going to share the screen and yeah, uh, Anya Anu is um, going to talk through them. Fantastic. Okay. Thanks, Anya. Thanks for volunteering. OK, so um, I'm just uh, 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 activity B. There we are. So these are the transport recommendations. So Anya, over to you. Uh, so we looked at three main points within which to um, set recommendations. Um, so then we gave two for each. Our first point was cycling and walking, uh, for which our final recommendations are make cycling and walking much safer by maintaining and improving all cycling and walking surfaces and increase cycling and walking paths, establishing seamless networks and publish accurate maps of the networks. Um, because there is a map in place, um, but it's not very accurate at the moment. Okay. You want to move on? Yeah. Please. Next, we looked at involving businesses and employees and our recommendations are, to encourage revenue generation through company sponsorship of schemes, through partnership, working with employers, charities, the council, and other interested parties. Um, this, for example, uh, is something like in London, they had a similar scheme to our barrel bikes. Um, um, and our second recommendation is uh, employer for charity consultation with employees about possible company transport schemes and incentives for employees to use them. Okay, next one, please. And lastly, we looked at improving school transport um, and we came up with Identify innovative transport solutions for schools, such as primary school walking buses, and action best practice travel plans for school transport, and identify and introduce opportunities and provide better bus services for school catchment areas and improve ease of access. Okay, thank you so much for sharing those with us, Anya. That's really great. Thank you. Another set of really fantastic uh, recommendations there. What we will do is when you break into your small groups at the very end of this session, um, you will have access to all of these so you can read them in a bit more detail and, and digest them. Okay, thank you for that. We're now going to move on to the buildings group. Uh, we're going to start with Paul's group. Um, Paul, who's going to share from your group? I'm going to share the screen, but um, Brian is going to um, do the commentary. So let me just do this sharing. Um, second. All right. Um, you should be able to see that. Okay, take it away, oh. Brian. <laughs> Well, at first, I'd like to apologise if we're not quite as polished as the other groups. Um, I jumped out of the last um, session to go and join the rural group because I'm just so nosy. Um, so I, I take it, Paul, we're just going to go for, for the red and at the bottom green. Correct. Yeah, just the bits, the, the green background stuff. Hopefully you can all see that, can you? Yeah. Great. OK, so um, the first role, if we can go to the top, Paul, just to show people what the subject matter was. was to uh, introduce and change building and planning regulation. So after careful consideration, um, we decided that uh, it required mandatory standards um, starting immediately for all new developments, um, specifically Passive House Plus or equivalent, but including sustainable building materials considerations um, with follow-up checks during build 
and upon completion uh, that they are fit for purpose. Um, this included future proofing to include emerging materials and, and technology and to increase the scope of the building inspectors to include all these new criteria and where required provide training for this. The second recommendation uh, was for any larger development community heating stroke cooling solutions district heating must be considered so this isn't a can be considered but must be considered and um, to, to strengthen that, we said that a feasibility study on the district heating sustainability has to be undertaken to prove that it's not viable to avoid using, um, that any heating cooling systems should be a, a renewable solution but with a mandatory emphasis on district solutions unless proven to be unavailable, unviable, sorry. Um, and within this to include ground source heat pumps uh, and, and other methods uh, as a consideration. Uh, finally, on this subject, or not finally, the, the, the penultimate one is for larger developments um, that the infrastructure de design should prioritise sustainability overall. Um, so this is looking at transport hubs, which um, links quite neatly into the transport groups, um, and also looking at the cost benefit analysis on all key decisions. Uh, and then the final uh, item on this is, is to open up the rule, the role sorry, of planners to adopt a more collaborative approach in providing proactive advice regarding environmental impacts. Um, we're aware that um, advice is given uh, from planning, but it doesn't necessarily mean that, that, that planning uh, with environmental considerations is forefront. This is to encourage that to be the case. And also, again, to provide the necessary training to support this. The next area of focus was supporting people to offer retrofit. Um, now, the recommendation for this was for retrofit. Re, sorry, retrofit. One size does not fit all. Um, that it needs a comprehensive expert and financial support for all different building types and levels of retrofit. Um, this included um, the provision of tailored advice for each situation size of project. Uh, to also consider uh, complementary measures to maximise returns. So we were looking at, um, for argument's sake, someone turning up for the advice and saying, I have a £3,000 budget, I've got this type of property, what is the best, uh, most efficient way of improving um, the returns? Uh, to strongly encourage HEC to seek and learn from existing successful models, such as the Manchester's People Powered Retrofit, and develop an enhanced county-wide model including website adver advertisement of this. Um, so it's not just uh, learning from Manchester and these other groups, it's actually looking to take that on as a countrywide pursuit and, 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 and champion it. Uh, conservation buildings. Now it is considered that these should be allowed to be improved environmentally as a priority and offers should mandate this, being sensitive to the integrity of the building. Um, quite often we felt that uh, conservation uh, uh, rules prevented uh, environment considerations uh, and that these should be relaxed with, with, with uh, remaining insensitive to the integrity of the building. Um, financial support should be fair to make improvements accessible to all. Uh, this is based on cost benefit analysis and full transparency of costs. Sourcing of funding should not rely only on central government but should also be actively sought from diverse sources, including local entities, um, and to have a register of approved contractors. Here we come to the next one, Paul, please. Uh, this area of focus was public, commercial, and other buildings. You'll be glad to hear it's the final one. Um, so this recommendation was for tailored support for retrofitting existing public buildings. Um, this essentially was um, a fact-finding mission. So feasibility studies, including EPC, done on all public buildings with action plans created and implemented, including timeframes. Um, this is on the assumption that we don't actually know what is required to be done with public buildings and, and that we need to get a register and, and understand what needs to be done. 
and then to create a central database of public building environmental improvements and register the performance. Um, we, we, we strongly felt that with all of these, that the um, council should actively promote their success. And this is something that we should be proud of. That's fantastic. Thank you so much, Brian. Again, another set of fantastic uh, recommendations, loads of detail in there to digest. Um, the next half of the buildings group was Alex's group. Um, is Rebecca still doing the feedback on your behalf? Yeah, um, we've actually got three presenting up. from our group. Uh, so Mervyn's going to kick us off and then uh, Abby's going to do our middle ones and Rebecca's going to close. So um, I'll just share my screen. And the first two recommendations are in bold and those are our top two that we agreed together. So Mervyn, are you happy to kick us off? You might be on mute there. Yeah, so we've uh, pinched part of the title, um, People Powered Partnerships for Retrofit, um, involving communities with developers and tradespeople to find answers together. So the recommendation is to form a partnership group to bring together key stakeholders. This, could inc this should include citizens assembly members, suppliers, health and safety assessors, traders, business groups, funding bodies, financial lenders, and experts in environmental retrofitting. This partnership will influence their, their strategic objectives and align them around shared priorities for retrofitting. <clears throat> the partnership group should provide a service that helps and advise and makes the process for retrofitting clearer and more easily accessible for homeowners and tenants. They could perform analysis of people's property alongside existing services such as energy performance certificate rating or EPC rating. They could provide cost benefit analysis for individuals based around their individual needs and circumstances, and that would enable people to make more informed decisions and educated choices. And we recommended that we should learn from existing practice elsewhere, for example, in Manchester, but also draw on the local expertise. Thanks, Mervyn. Abby's up next. Okay, so for our second one, we've gone with increasing the supply and use of sustainable building materials and practices. So um, we want to incent um, incentivize the use of local sustainable materials such as timber, hemp, straw and wool in construction insulation, working with developers and architects. So seek to provide financial incentives for using local and disincentives for long distance source materials and encourage local farmers to diversify to meet the need and major manufacturers to transition towards sustainable materials, particularly in new council developments. Um, and then provide training for people on how to use sustainable materials through apprenticeships and subsidised to continue professional development training courses for existing tradespeople. So create a locally approved list of sustainable tradespeople who have done this training and have been certified and promote the certification in the media to raise the profile of the accreditation, work with national partners, educational and training partners and the new university on adapting the nationally approved occupational standards and syllabuses for Herefordshire's needs. Thanks, Abby. And Rebecca. Thank you. Um, so yeah, our final um, one was uh, to for trusted advice and information on sustainable materials and practices readily available for everyone. Providing public information to people in a stratified ladder approach so people can take easy steps and gradually increase their commitment to renovating their houses, learning from existing case studies and celebrate local successes. This should be shared through leaflets with a council tax bill, newspapers, local radio, in libraries and on social media. Um, Organise in-person expos and country road shows in local areas to benefit local businesses, showcase new materials and approaches to environmentally friendly building. These events should be impartial and financially independent rather than promoting any one business. Thank you all. 
Fantastic. Thank you, Rebecca, Abby, and Mervyn's fantastic recommendations again. So Thank much you. detail in some of these. I can't quite believe you've got to that point in such a short period of time. Um, OK, so let's move on now to land use, and we're going to hear from Mary's group first. Mary, who's going to feed back from your group? We have we have three people feeding back from our group. Um, can everyone see the document? Yeah. Yeah. OK, Jean, if you'd like to kick off. So um, we're going to we would like um, train experts and uh, fund free expert consultations for farmers to explore more sustainable methods, reduce emissions, and to create a pool of in county experts funded to work with existing partnerships like NFU, Rural Hub, and Herefordshire Council to ensure that our Herefordshire farmers get the best from the new government subsidies to achieve zero carbon targets. I mean, we don't know a lot about the subsidies, but we're assuming that not, the farmers are going to struggle with it, with this because it is going to be the biggest change in farming for a, several generations, probably being out of the EU. So that, that was the kind of background to that one, really. Um, second one is um, Herefordshire Council to work in partnership with parish councils and others to develop guidelines and toolkits on increasing biodiversity and rewilding in their local areas, including addressing brownfield sites, housing developments, and vacant land and car parks, public parks, and roadsides. So that's really aimed at very local government, local parishes, local communities, um, who have already, some of whom have already started rewilding parts of their areas. <laughs> As I say, I can't see, see this current screen. Oh, can you not see? No. I've still um, got, got, got the, uh, the last one. Can everyone else see which should, uh, should have Stephen at the top of the screen? Yeah, yeah. yeah I can see it. Okay. Shall I kick off? Yes, please, <laughs> Stephen. No, I, 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 I still, still can't see it. Um, I, I, I can't do that directly from here, Trevor. Um, oh. Um, I wonder whether Francis might be able to help you behind the scenes, Trevor. Is it okay. did, you can't see the screen at all? Well, I can just see see the last one: uh, sustainable materials and uh, practices. Oh, That's can everyone that. else see the? Can you just give give us a quick thumbs up if everyone else can see? Yeah, sounds like the current <laughs> one. It feels it feels like you're in a glitch. There's something that hasn't been <clears> fresh. Okay, I wonder whether... your screen's frozen. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, th I think um, possibly Trevor, you need to just sort of log out and log back in again. That would probably solve that problem. <sighs> okay. Yeah, he's. Yeah, I think you've you've frozen. Yeah, there's something. Uh, there's some going weird here. I think it's po possibly your internet. So just try logging off and logging back in again. Stephen, do you want to do you want to wait okay. for Trevor or Stephen? Yeah, I, I can I can wait for Trevor if if that's okay. Oh, or... you, 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 you you carry on. Okay, no, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, okay, so point three, uh, Heritage Council investigate their statutory powers to develop a strategic planning uh, powers to address. Um, first one was more about planning uh, process to encourage and influence landowners, developers to address biodiversity um, uh, and what they can do around that. Um, the other bit was around financial incentives and award schemes and grants to encourage any groups and organisations to rewild and increase biodiversity. Um, ensuring that these are results driven and contribute towards reduction in carbon emissions. Uh, the fourth one uh, is um, sort of linked to the, um, I think, uh, about the, um, uh, the anaerobic digesters really, but uh, it was under, undertake a feasibility study to develop and combine a strategy covering food and farming waste and other waste um, and using these digesters to uh, produce uh, biofuels for, for, for vehicles that could be council vehicles, but it also could be um, public transport vehicles as well. Um, and some of the output, I believe, is things like um, uh, fertilizers for, for soil and things. Thanks, Stephen. Caitlin, can you see this? I just yeah, I can see it. Bit. Thank you. Okay, so um, our fifth recommendation is to create a jubilee forest across Herefordshire within 10 years with appropriate management of wildlife by communities and partners with access available to communities. So basically, we want, um, we've got to have a reason to put 
trees everywhere otherwise people won't like warm up to it as much and with the correct management with it would mean there is there's going to be results and it's not just left to be eaten by other animals and then in 10 years time we don't see any results and then uh, our sixth rep recommendation is to enable access to expertise and information for rewilding and tree planting so that communities are empowered to take action and link this to the, the countywide publicity and awareness campaign of the Climate Change Partnerships Board. Um, so that is basically making sure that we're giving the people the resources and uh, the help that they need to actually implement rewilding re re and tree planting. Um, so yeah. Thank you, Caitlin. Fantastic. Thank you so much, you three. That's fantastic. Um, again, another fantastic set of recommendations. Love the link back to the Jubilee the year there for that particular recommendation. Um, and so our final group, um, coming to Kath for your group, who's doing that for you, yours? So um, feedback on behalf of my group, I'll just share the, the screen for you. I'm presuming this has been done in Miss World Order. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> Thank you. Um, well, first of all, we, we felt that something that, that went across all themes was that we should that younger people should be included in all the decision making stages because it's their future. They have great ideas, very positive, very optimistic, unlike us cynical old people. Uh, and so they have more skin in the game. Um, so it could link up with things like the sixth form college, schools and, and uh, other local um, other reps from other groups as well. So that, that was just a, a, an important thing that didn't fit in, in under any one heading. So under food, um, our, a, our vision was to encourage people to purchase local sustainable food to reduce the carbon footprint of food miles, etc., to help the local economy and to promote more local employment opportunities. Two specifics, firstly, to develop local food hubs where local farmers, small producers and allotment holders can sell their produce with dedicated, preferably low cost or rent free, subsidised, sustainable premises for those hubs. And also to encourage local public bodies, schools, hospitals, etc., to review their existing procurement rules to include greater weighting towards emission reducing factors for using local growers and suppliers. We had more under education, we had more um, items. So, um, again, a, a, a project wide. Um, or assembly wide matter, which we got from the motive from Dan motivation person is that without information, uh, people, it's difficult for people to do the right thing with information. They often do, as we've seen in the pandemic, give, let people see what the picture is and then they'll generally they'll know what to do. So we felt that we really needed a dedicated commute marketing and communication campaign for local residents to motivate and encourage environmentally aware behavior change not least uh, food waste, but actually had listening to the other presentations, we could include the cycling maps in there, we could include locally approved list of accredited tradespeople and information for rewilding, just as three uh, things off the cuff. So uh, an information hub, um, rather than having to wade through the Herefordshire website. So more than one person in our group was embarrassed at how little we knew about what Herefordshire Council had already been done and was planning to do. The information on the website, Ben dug it out for us, but if it's all in one easily accessible place, then people can make their own choices easily, more easily, should I say. So the specifics, encourage Herefordshire schools to engage with food, food, farming and sustainability in their curriculum, the bit they have control over, to support Herefordshire's climate action plan. The two, two specifics under that were running in, in school awareness sessions on where food comes from, its value, how to cook and how to avoid food waste using visual and hands-on education, but also running, developing school and college partnerships, external work with local farms, that the farms that use sustainable methods like Regen Ben. And uh, review the current use of, in, if you're going to have a communication strategy, as we said right at the beginning, then you need to make sure it gets to the right people in the right way. We don't want it to get to all the people who are socially aware and, and uh, are doing everything anyway. We want to get the people who haven't got the opportunity or the chance to, to do that. So uh, 
review current use of digital and social media, as well as online sources, in order to develop an app for all climate change in initiatives in Herefordshire. And that would be including restricted to grant schemes, local projects, employment opportunities, as I mentioned earlier. Um, and thirdly, to provide mobile pop-ups to tour the county to engage with local communities, which uh, chimed in with one of our earlier suggestions, isn't it? one of another group's earlier suggestions. So this could deliver practical hands-on um, advice about emission reducing initiatives and um, including cooking, reducing food waste and uh, messages popped up in front of that, uh, whatever the last, thank you, uh, and using local produce, thank you. And finally, we felt that uh, there were things that needed to be changed nationally. So we, that, that's us, we individuals, the council, our local MPs could lobby the Department of Education on including relevant aspects of climate action in the national curriculum, particularly in this year of COP26, when we, ha we have chair of the, uh, of the COP for a year. I mean, that would be something the government could do to, um, to show that we really mean it. And if we, it, there's no point trying to change a lot of us old dinosaurs, but if we can get all the young children on board from the beginning, then they can teach us and uh, make things happen as they should. And, and similarly to lobby government to include environmental impact as a significant part of um, procure, procurement rules um, for public uh, body um, catering, for example, uh, hospitals, schools and so forth. And we also mentioned it's not written here, but lobbying government about um, sub farm subsidies for things like rewilding and for trip planting trees along um, by the river and so forth. Okay, thank you so much, Kit. Another set of fantastic recommendations. Um, wow, I mean, I'm I don't know what you feel. I feel quite you know, but because obviously you've you've been part of all these conversations. I think for Sarah and myself who haven't been sitting in them, um, you know, we're. I, mean, I feel really blown away by what you've managed to achieve. Um, I think you should be incredibly proud of yourselves. Um, I just want to very quickly hand over to Natalia. Clearly, there's so much detail there. This is one of the reasons that we were very keen to um, give you some time post these sessions to look at them and digest those recommendations before you make your voting on them. I think it would be so hard to be voting within the sessions, um, which is why we've taken that decision to do that. So clearly Natalia is not going to give you detailed feedback on those recommendations now, but I know that she just wants the opportunity just to share her initial thoughts, uh, obviously just as I've done in terms of first hearing of them. So Natalia, if I could just very quickly come to you to kind of get your, your immediate reactions. Well, <clears throat> thank you, Claire, and uh, just thank you to the presenters. That was uh, really grateful for you to do that. Um, Claire has actually stolen my word, which was blown away, or if that's two words. Mm. Um, they're really fantastic recommendations. There's a mixture there of bite-sized, which is, you know, achieve, you know, you can see they're achievable, but also, you know, big stuff as well. So policy change at, at local and national level. And I think that's, that's what's come out is a really good balance between those. And again, you've got the realism and the ambition, which is exactly what we want to see. Mm -hmm. So this has exceeded my expectations and people have obviously worked really hard on it, thought a lot about the issues. And it's really difficult pinning down particular ones um, when there's so much which, which needs to be done. So I'm really impressed and really looking forward to taking it on to the next step. Okay, thanks Natalia. Um, so we will remind you at the end of today exactly what those next steps are, just so that you're really sort of crystal clear on that. Um, but we'll wait until that's the kind of the very last things that we'll do with you today. So um, I just want to take, um, you know, we want to give you 20 minutes now, just back in your small groups, you will have all of those recommendations. If you want to revisit any of them to look at, you know, this is this next session really is about trying to make sure that you are happy in terms of full, fully prepared in terms of the voting process that will come, you know, post today's session, um, just so that you've had a chance to look at them as a group, really, and reflect on them as a group. So we're going to put you back into small groups with your facilitators, got 20 minutes for that, and, and then we'll see you again. Okay, thank you. Welcome back, everybody. I'm sure you're feeling very tired at this point of the day, so we're, we're going to keep this fairly short. 
Um, so what we thought it would be really nice to do now is just for you to share what your vision statements are for Herefordshire, what you wanted to look like in 2030. And just to remind you, we are now joined by Councillor Ellie Chowns and Councillor David Hitchener, who is the leader of the council. Um, so they will hear directly your statements, but just to remind you, they haven't yet heard your recommendations and they won't do until you have finished voting on them. So this is just for them to hear direct from you what your vision for the county is. So we'll go round each group now um, and we'll start with Kath, your group please. I don't know whether it's you feeding back or somebody from your group. Is everyone able to see that? Yes. Brilliant. Um, it was really lovely and upbeat and lots of compliments um, to the team for um, organising the um, uh, assembly um, so proficiently that we got through and made through made such an, um, a lot of fantastic recommendations. Um, there was a real sense of pride that we you know want to be able to showcase um, Herefordshire as an innovator and a place that leads the way in um, you know changing practice and developing technologies and um, moving things forward so that people come to Herefordshire and to, to see what we're doing and we're, we're showcasing that. So we want to be um, a model that other counties will look to for inspiration, but we still want to um, be, we recognise we're rural and we're full of heritage and character, um, but we want to, so we want to retain all that, um, but still be at the forefront of green technology. We want to celebrate and champion new ideas and innovation and um, the idea of a Jubilee Forest, people are really excited about that. If we could develop that as a legacy, that, that really struck a chord with a lot of people about um, what a fantastic resource that would be, um, you know, to leave it to future generations to, to be able to, to create that. Um, uh, we looked at, um, we talked about uh, a lot of different types of renewable energy, um, that it's going to be a safer, cleaner, greener county for the future and a place that's pleasant to live and work and visit. Um, we're, we're excited about the um, prospect of having locally trained workforce that offers expertise and skills to the rest of the UK and the world. Um, and that we're going to be running not on fossil fuels, um, that we're going to be much more environmentally friendly on fuels um, and a, a much more joined up system in the future. Um, literally a green county without the eyesores and an eco-farming capital of the UK. So full of um, optimism and ambition on ours. Um, yeah, that kind of sums it up really. That's brilliant. Thank you, Kath. Well, I think that level of enthusiasm at this point um, in the day is very impressive. So thank you very much. Um, are you able to stop sharing, Kath? Great, thank you. So we'll go to Mary's group now. Thanks, Mary. Sorry about that. <laughs> thank you. We covered a lot of the same issues um, as CAS group. Um, and you'll see from our first jam board there that it was uh, quite a bit around local food products, um, sustainable technical solutions and innovation. Um, and about retaining and keeping our sustainable communities. So I hope my, my group forgives me. So we, we finished a little bit prematurely. So I added a few words into this last statement, but they'll, they'll be able to tell which ones I did add. So we want a sustainable, beautiful, nature rich and nature loving, affordable environment in which people want to be in. We will be a county for employers for cutting edge sustainable technologies, cutting edge sustainable and technologies that are in keeping with our wonderful county's unique assets. I'll take out that extra and because it shouldn't have been there <laughs> but you get the gist well, that's fantastic yeah that's really i can't I'm, i can't believe you've come up with that in half an hour <laughs> that's amazing thank you very much okay let's go on to the next group that's alex that's your group ah um i'm just going to share my screen then i think mary needs to stop sharing first thanks mary and I have two volunteers from my group, so I think Great. Sophie and Kit. Hopefully you can all see that. Yeah. So we had loads of post-its and 
some lovely doodles as well from uh, resident artist Sophie. Um, and we've combined these into a bit of a vision statement together. Um, Sophie, do you want to kick us off? Yeah, um, I'll go. Um, so we want Herefordshire to be Greenfordshire, um, a beautiful biodiverse county with wonderful green spaces, engaged citizens and easy, safe, environmentally friendly transport. Brilliant, thanks. And then Kit. So, so, sorry, in addition to that, we want it to be a county that inspires everyone, that shops locally when possible, that reuses and recycles, and that involves young people and communities in protecting biodiversity and enjoying wildlife. Fantastic. That's brilliant. Thank you very much. OK, right, we'll move on, Lauren, to your group next, please. Thank you. Can everybody see that OK? Yes, we can, Lauren. Thanks. So we had lots of post-it notes and a beautiful song performed by Anya. So thank oh. you for performing that for us while we were going through this session together. Um, I'm, I'm just going to read the statement because it's quite lengthy, but I think it just sums up the amazing conversation we just had in that last session. So by 2030, we would like Herefordshire to be a friendly place where people are healthy and happy, a place with more trees and biodiversity where everyone can enjoy access to the countryside. A county where there isn't homelessness and there is no longer a need for food banks. A place with clean air and a healthy river. A place with a strong local economy and less reliance on cars. A place with a thriving music and art scene. A place with more regenerative farming, access to locally sourced food, more markets, fewer supermarkets, less food waste, and no moaning about traffic congestion because it's been <laughs> sorted out. That's great. Yeah, that sounds brilliant. Thank you very much. I must say, I'm, I'm quite envious of the fact that I didn't get to hear Anya's song. That's beautiful. So, Anya, I don't know whether you could play us out at the end, whether you'd be prepared to do that, but I think probably everyone would, would love to hear it. So, um, if you're prepared to, Anya, we, we'd love that. Um, but yeah, I love those words as well. It's fantastic. Okay, Paul, over to your group, please. Okay, thanks. Um, you should be able to see the screen now. Um, so we had a little bit of quiet time where we were just writing post-its and we did that on another page and we selected one each. So these are the five that the group selected. First one, very relate related to the assembly, is to have a pioneering council that listens and has visible success from those listenings. Um, uh, the next one there is a transport system that will alleviate the traffic chaos, which is going to be solved, as we've just found out, <laughs> in the centre of Hereford each day, each day. So a win-win there. And uh, staying on the centre, rejuvenation of retail in centres, including independent shops selling local produce. So we're cutting down on the food miles and all the produce miles and any other kind of commodity. Um, another one related to transport, one ticket to travel by bus and train to, to make all that a lot more accessible and appealing. And finally, because Herefordshire is such a, a rural and farming uh, heritage county, to have re and return to this more sustainable farming model adopted by all the farmers and be trailblazers for the rest of the country in that respect. That's great, thank you. And definitely some real, you can see where these vision statements are linking and where there's some real common themes coming out. Great, thank you. So finally, Vicky, please. Right, I didn't mute before I started sharing, <laughs> sorry about that. So um, we ran slightly out of time because we did have, if I can get back to that previous screen, um, a very nice uh, lot of stickies on there. Um, oh, that's Florence. So we had a lot of good stickers and we translated them into this, which was a bit rushed, I'm afraid. And it's in um, two boxes because, again, I couldn't actually ha didn't have the time to do anything about it. But um, I hope my group are happy with this. It was, I slightly had to finish it off. By 2030, Herefordshire will have retained its historic and rural character with a thriving community, exciting cultural facilities, excellent public transport in hubs and rewilded healthy farms and countryside. The economy of the county will be local, robust and innovative 
including top-notch food. Excellent. That's it. I think those sound absolutely amazing. I mean, it's really the, the rural nature of the county and, you know, that link to farming and agriculture really comes through, doesn't it, in all of them. That's brilliant. Thank you so much for all your hard work on those, everybody. So I'm going to hand over now to Councillor Hitchener and then Councillor Chines, just for some, some observations, really, on, on those statements. Um, Councillor Hitchener, shall I come to you first? I think we're going to try to do it the other way around, Sarah. OK, no That's problem. Yeah. With me, great. Uh, and you can definitely all call me Ellie. Um, that is amazing. I'm, I, I'm just so inspired, actually, by the visions that you've all come up with. There's so many common themes, like Sarah was saying, and there's so much pride in Herefordshire that comes through, and I completely feel that with you. And a real sense of hope, actually, and optimism. You know, these are completely doable things. I can see those visions in my mind's eye, absolutely, as I listen to them kind of articulated by you all. And I think something that shines through so strongly from all of that is that tackling the climate crisis, tackling the biodiversity crisis, isn't just about the environment. It's actually about quality of life and well-being for people, making this an even better county for everybody that lives here. Um, those things that, you know, have, have those extra benefits like creating good jobs and warm homes and easy ways to get around and fantastic delicious food and that thriving local economy that's kind of at the, at the core of what you're all talking about and the vision of just walking through more woodlands in Herefordshire uh, is also really really inspiring so I'm just you know I'm blown away actually by everything that you've done I'm so impressed with your staying power and the time and energy that you've put into this and it really looks like you've all put your whole hearts into it, you know, your hearts and minds. And um, whenever I've been in here, there's been a fantastic sense of kind of the group group endeavour, really. So I want to say a massive thank you to you all and just a, a really strong personal commitment that I will do everything I possibly can to try and realise that vision of how Herefordshire could be. You know, there's so much that we're doing already. There's so much more that we can do and that we need to do. And I think that the visions that you've outlined and the recommendations that I can't wait to see are going to help push us along that path that bit faster to that vision of a kind of a thriving, zero carbon, nature rich Herefordshire for us all in 2030 and many decades to come. So thank you all. Yeah, thanks, Ellie. Um, I, what, what struck me um, was the pride that everybody has in the county and the pride we want to continue and that fits in actually with what the government talks about and it's leveling up fund whatever that comes out with part of it is about pride pride in our place pride in our community so that's uh, that's that's really encouraging um i like the idea of herefordshire being trailblazers you know leading the way and i think we can be doing that as a county uh, we shouldn't be seen as little old Hereford uh, following on from everybody else. I think we can lead. So that's uh, tremendously encouraging that that's what you want us to, to be doing. Um, we've been asked in the chat about what we're going to be doing next. Uh, feeding back to you. We will be feeding back with you uh, to you. We're not quite sure how, how that will be. Let's have a look at your recommendations. Um, and um, it's, it's encouraging that you... Well, hopefully a lot of you want to carry on and meet again. And uh, I think we do have a meeting for the feedback um, next week or week after that. Um, so we'll look forward to, to that. And um, we will work. Uh, we've got the council budget meeting, which is um, later on uh, next month, February. Um, I'm just trying to think. Yes, it's the, the cabinet meeting is next week. Um, and and uh, yes, council is the week after that. So hopefully they will approve um, putting 1.3 million or thereabouts uh, behind this project, uh, and we can then see what we can do with uh, with that. So really, a very big thank you from Ellie and myself and the whole whole cabinet and officers for uh, great effort and and for committing the time to do this. We really do appreciate it. We hope you have gained from doing it already, uh, and the whole county will gain uh, as we go forward. So a really big thank you. Um, I hope you've all found it a really positive experience. 
Uh, there may be more um, citizens assemblies in the future. We'll have a look and see um, <clears throat> see how this has gone. Um, we might find that um, Sarah and her her uh, colleagues have done such a fantastic job at, at this. There will be lots of other counties want to follow up from them. So another a local business that we can help to to expand and uh, do some great things around the country. So um, just a, a finally just a big thank you to everybody for your time uh, and effort. Much appreciated. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you. I was just going to hand over to Natalia now, who was going to pick up, I think, on the comment made by Brian in the chat about what happens next with feedback. <laughs> yes, also to um, confirm to uh, the councillors that I have made some commitments and some promises. So obviously the, the first thing is that once you voted on the recommendations, we'll, we'll publish them so they will be in the public domain. We do have a session on the 7th of February, which we would like um, some of you to come and present to the Cabinet on those recommendations. That will be really useful. The report itself, which will go to Cabinet, will be published a week in advance of that meeting, and I've promised to send everybody the link. I will also let you know about how you can join that as a public meeting as well. We've made a commitment to come back to you in six months' time on progress, but I think maybe we could do that late, maybe a little bit more regularly just so that you you know that things aren't gone invisible and nothing's happening and the other thing somebody asked me about is now that you know so much about this subject is how you can get involved in different ways and I'll work with some of my colleagues because there's some, some fantastic partnerships that I've discovered over these the course of this time uh, together and we will get a list of those together and see which one suits you and what you're interested in and you can join those and I know people will be um, really uh, grateful of your contribution because you're so knowledgeable now. The final thing I want to say is a massive thank you to Impact, the facilitators, the IT support, the welfare support. Um, it's been a really great experience and of course to all of you for the contributions you've made that I've learned from you and I hope you've learned a great deal as well. Great. Thank you very much, Natalia. Um, OK, so we're at the end. Um, we're going to just I'm going to hand over to Claire now and um, she's just going to tell us a little bit more about the voting. Anya, if you could play us a little song at the end, we'd love it. Um, but I'll hand over to Claire now. But can I just say I'm going to miss our morning chats. I've really enjoyed those, <laughs> those pre joining chats. So anyway, Claire's going to just wrap up. Okay, so congratulations folks, you made it. You may not have thought that we would possibly get here when we started this uh, what, over two weeks ago, no, three weeks ago uh, on that first, first Thursday when we bombarded you with climate science, uh, told you all about carbon burping um, and cow pack developments. Um, but I hope you have left this experience feeling uh, that much more knowledgeable um, and, and kind of enriched by the experience. And I hope we haven't worked you so hard that you're kind of going to spend the next week recovering. Um, so just a few things, just some admin related things now really, just to tell you. So later this evening, you will get a SurveyMonkey link uh, from Max via SurveyMonkey, and, and that will have all the recommendations set out in it for you to vote against. So you will be able to tell us whether you strongly support, support, don't support, strongly don't support or abstain or, or you're not sure about what you feel about those recommendations on all of them, each individually. Um, and there'll also be a comments box under each recommendation that you can fill in if you choose to or you don't have to. And that would just be for you to provide some commentary to us to explain perhaps about why you have chosen to vote in a certain way. So that will be coming out. You will have until midnight on Tuesday. Uh, of next week to complete that and we will chase people if we haven't had your voting in because we want to ensure that everybody does vote um, so we'll kind of chase you up on that so you've got uh, a good kind of 48 hours to get your votes in um, later on in the week we'll also send you another survey monkey link uh, with a short survey in it just to give you the opportunity to feedback on the whole experience um, and different aspects of it so how you found the onboarding process 
uh, how you found the information, the support, how we could make that, this a better experience for people going forward. So we're really, really keen to get your honest feedback on that. We know that there are things that we could change that could be improved. So we're really keen to try and refine that if we do do another assembly in the future. So it'd be great to hear your feedback on that. Um, and I think that's probably all the admin we needed to tell you about. So um, thank you again, a massive, massive thank you. Thank you to all our fantastic facilitators. They've been wonderful, really so grateful for all their input. We really couldn't do it without any member of this team. So thank you to Francis for our IT support. Thank you for all our speakers. Thank you for our wellbeing support. I think as a team, um, it's been a brilliant job. So I think Anya, if you're happy to, we would absolutely love you to play us out as a, as a perfect ending to what we hope has been a really, really successful assembly for you all. I can do that. Thanks, Anya. <laughs> um, I'll play a song. Um, this is one that I wrote kind of recently. Um, it's about a salsa dancer, because I go to salsa classes um, above the coffee pot. If anyone's ever heard of them, they're a lot of fun. She danced like nobody owned her in the room above the cafe. He held her in his lucky hands as they danced the night away. Over there in the distance, the moon shone down upon them. The girl with the lion's hair and the man with life in his eyes, they forget about time. Her figure sways with the music as he tells her where to go. Conversation between just the two of them and outside her wouldn't know. As he twirls her between his arms, she lights up the room with a smile. I'm captivated, and for a moment her eyes catch mine, and I forget about the time. So beautiful, so magical, you move, and so ethereal, like you, nothing to prove. So lightly, her feet brush the floor as she flirts with the music in the air. Girl with a lion's head. Her footsteps run round my brain. Dance with the lion's mane. And now I know, I know. Sometimes you forget about time. You forget about time. I don't think we could have had a better ending to that assembly. Anya, thank you so much. Thank so you. everyone have a fantastic evening. It'd be lovely to stay in touch with everybody. Um, and just thanks again for all your time and commitment. Thank you. Thank you. Bye everyone. Bye. Everybody. Bye. Thank, Goodbye. You. Bye. thank you. Thank you. Bye everybody. Thank you. Bye. Thank you everyone. Bye. 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 Thank you all. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Bye.
Bye, everyone. Bye. Goodbye.